Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, everybody. It's great to see that you're all enjoying your vegetarian lunch, low-carbon vegetarian lunch, that is. We are excited to get started with the afternoon plenary. And I want to let you know that if you like the vegetarian lunch, just wait till the vegan lunch comes for tomorrow. All right, I know, there's some excitement out there. All right, so we will get started. Thank you. We have an exciting lineup for our next plenary, starting with a word from our networking reception sponsor, City. And we are very pleased to have with us today Val Smith, who is their managing director and global head of corporate sustainability. She has been with Citi for 15 years and oversees the bank's global sustainability initiatives, including its sustainable progress strategy and its $100 billion environmental finance goal. Val has also led Citi's collaboration with Ceres through its membership in our company network for more than a decade. Please join me in welcoming a woman who truly understands the work ahead of us and is helping to transform the finance sector. Thank you so much, Val. I was wondering what my theme song would be. That was a good start. Hi, everybody. I'm Val Smith. I'm the head of sustainability at Citi. Um, Citi joined Ceres in 2008, and I thought we were one of the old timers here until I was reminded that this is their 30th anniversary. And it's pretty remarkable the foresight that Joan Bavaria and Citi, Ceres' other founders had to create this unique forum that set out a new narrative on how companies and investors could be part of the change that we need to see in the world and not adversaries to it. And as we think about what it will take to get us there, I think it's helpful to take stock of where we've been. When we joined Ceres, Citi's sustainability program had been under development for 10 years, but it was really still in its infancy. Our early years with Ceres were focused on reporting, and Ceres began organizing annual stakeholder dialogue sessions with us to get feedback and push our comfort zone in terms of disclosure. They supported us through the development of the carbon principles over 10 years ago, which got Citi and our other banks more comfortable engaging with our clients, in this case, the power sector, to consider low carbon alternatives. Ceres also helped us to convene a group of stakeholders, of clients, investors, NGOs, to get feedback on our sustainable progress strategy and $100 billion environmental finance goal announced in 2015. They worked with us and the other major US banks to develop a joint bank statement on climate policy to signal our support for the negotiations about to unfold at the Paris Climate Talks. And most recently in February, they convened a group of our investors to review our first TCFD climate risk assessment report and provide input on our climate scenario analysis going forward. So within the context of the corporate and investor, investor world, we've made a lot of progress. We need to celebrate that, and we need to reflect on what those successes meant, because we have a big challenge ahead of us. The IPCC 1.5 degree report, the National Climate Assessment released last fall, they showed us how high the stakes are. So recently, I've become a bit of a fan of science fiction movies. And whether it's legend when the zombies come or interstellar when global warming has destroyed this planet and we're looking out to other dimensions or arrival when the aliens come and they show us how to work together and save ourselves. The narrative arc of these movies is always something like this. Humanity cannot get its act together. All is lost until the very last moment when we have a miracle breakthrough and our civilization goes on and it rebuilds. So I've been to series conferences pretty much every year since Citi joined a decade ago, and Mindy's talks have had a common thread. The challenge is there, 
but collectively we can meet it. Failure is not an option because her children, Abe and Jesse, my children, Jackson and Brody, all our children, our nieces, our nephews, our friends, they depend on it. But there's a new kind of urgency this year. We know that climate change is happening. We know from the IPCC report and the National Climate Assessment how high the stakes are. And we have less than 12 years to turn around this massive ship called our global economy. So going back to the science fiction world, if we are going to have our miracle breakthrough or our series of miracle breakthroughs, it might be up to us in this room to create them. City is hosting the networking reception tonight. My purpose up here is really to invite you to that. But I would like to leave us with two pieces of homework. Number one, what is the one change that we as individuals can make, whether it's continuing to build on the plant-based environment that Ceres is introducing us to this week, or is there another personal change to lower our carbon footprint? And number two, what is the big change that our organizations can help to bring about and what will we do to make that happen? So I'd like to suggest that we use the networking reception to celebrate series and build our networks, but also to commit to and to share those actions. So a big thank you to series for bringing us all together to continue to push us forward in search of our small wins and miracle breakthroughs to get us there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Val and City, for your continued efforts to increase both the scale and the scope of your commitments and those that you work with. I would want to just take a second here to reiterate Val's invitation, encourage you all not to miss the networking reception this evening, because it will likely be the most Instagrammable moment of the entire conference. It's going to be held up on the very top level of the hotel on the 32nd floor. So make sure you say, how do I get up there? How do I get up to the highest level? And you bring your phones, bring your cameras, whatever it is. It'll be fun. Um, on top of the fact that, of course, we have to make the commitments that Val just called us to do. I now have the honor to introduce California's 34th state treasurer, Fiona Ma, who was elected with more votes than any other candidate for treasurer in the state's history. Prior to this, Treasurer Ma was the majority whip for the California Assembly, and she is well known for the coalitions that she built during a state budget crisis in order to pass groundbreaking legislation that protected public education in the environment while also expanding access to health care. So please join me in welcoming to the stage a woman who knows how to get stuff done for a very exciting announcement. Treasurer Ma? Thank you, Dawn, for that introduction. Um, I also want to say that I have just finished my first four months in office, and I have to say I love my job. I am using both sides of my brain now, and equally important, my father is finally proud of me again. <laughs> I do want to recognize uh, my finance cousin, controller Betty Yi. It has been a pleasure to, again, uh, continue working with her. I worked closely with her on the Board of Equalization, and now we sit on many boards together. And I also see some of my trustees, Trustees United, from CalPERS and CalSTRS, as well as our CEO, CalSTRS Jack Ennis. I'd also like to recognize Mindy Luber, uh, thank her for her leadership. Uh, she says this conference is high energy. There are 700 of you who are passionate about sustainability as well as making change. So I don't need to let you know and tell you that climate change threatens our quality of life, our economy, and poses material risks to our communities. 
A recent article by the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco directly states that climate change poses a real threat to our economy. In a more forbidding vein, another recent report by the Urban Land Institute claims that using insurance as a mitigation strategy against loss of value is not sustainable simply because insurance premiums are based on historical data. Similarly, other reports identify tens of billions of dollars in infrastructure needs in California and that new infrastructure must be resilient, adaptable, and respond to the threat of climate change. What should we be doing about all those things? Last year, California's leaders committed the state to eliminating fossil fuels from its electrical grid by 2045. At his first State of the State address, Governor Gavin Newsom reaffirmed that California's long-term commitment to the environment and to fighting climate change remains as strong as ever. In August 2018, my predecessors signed the Green Bond Pledge, which is an aspirational commitment to incorporate green finance into our future infrastructure replacement borrowings. California has an opportunity now to demonstrate its continued leadership to fulfill those two commitments. It starts with recognizing that green bonds can contribute to meeting the state's future infrastructure needs, but there must be a practical strategy to do that. That recognition should not be a blind commitment to selling green bonds because they are trendy, but rather because they are a vital part of an integrated strategy that addresses the economic dangers, real estate valuations, and our long-term infrastructure liabilities. We need to leverage California's market presence and leadership to develop a strategy that ensures that green bonds marketed to investors truly are green. The organic food movement started in the 1940s due to consumer concerns over the health and safety of growing processes and the ingredients that made up the food they ate. For years, whether a product was truly organic was an open question. Today in the U.S., there are four different levels of categories for organic standards established at the national level. These established protocols and terms have provided greater clarity for American consumers. I believe we are in a similar situation today with green bonds in the United States that the organic food movement was many years ago. Institutional investors are already showing increased demand for green investments that are more efficient and which are demonstrable benefits uh, for our ecology. But what is green remains an open question. In the field I am trained in accountancy, accountancy, there is a concept of general accepted accounting principle. However, there is not yet an accepted definition of what a green bond is. I aim to change that. The Green Bond Pledge, a simple declaration that financing long-term infrastructure and capital projects must address environmental impact and climate risk, is just the starting point. I am an, an appointed member of the Standards Board of the Climate Bonds Initiative, an international investor-focused nonprofit organization that has developed a labeling protocol for green finance based on science and reliable data. My colleague on that body, Peter Ellsworth, is also a valued leader in the CERES organization. And I would also like to take this opportunity to recognize Tim Schaefer, my deputy of finance, who has been uh, this long-standing rep under Treasurer John Chung and will continue uh, in my capacity as well in this movement. Whether it is the standard proposed by the Climate Bonds Initiative or another standard, it is important that California begin deploying green bond financing based on a sound and scientific practice of identifying green projects that deserve a green label. California must begin to deliberately incorporate a green bond strategy and climate-friendly infrastructure projects into the planning and deployment of transactions for California's infrastructure. By investing sooner rather than later in physical assets that support positive impacts on our climate, or which make the public infrastructure we all rely on more resilient to climate change. We can telegraph to the rest of the world in general 
and investors in California's bonds in particular that California intends to lead in a meaningful way toward the health of our planet. I have called upon various policymakers in Sacramento to join with me in a detailed effort to identify and promote those projects financed with bonds issued by the state as green if they meet standards established by recognized international scientists as supporting resilience, adaptation, or climate response. I hope to see a consensus develop around the identification process in time to accommodate California's normal cycle of bond sales by spring of 2020. And finally, I look forward to working with Ceres and its supporters to accomplish the lofty goals of the Green Bond Pledge and a more sustainable, resilient future in California, home to the fifth largest economy in the world. Congratulations, Ceres, on your 30th anniversary, and I look forward to working with you for many years moving forward. Thank you so much. Wow, thank you so much, Fiona. And you know, this really is truly groundbreaking news for us, and you have our pledge back to you that you have our support, and we will do what we can to encourage other states to follow your lead, as so many states do when it comes to California policy on climate. So thank you again very much for your commitments.